Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tribe UG podcast. This is season four, episode five, and I'm your host, the Count Markula. And in case you're wondering why I'm welcoming you for the first time in four seasons, well, yesterday I got two tweets from Missy Elliott and I just felt like the rest of the team needed to go and level up because <laughs> they, they need to do better. So today I brought some other good people to take their spaces and have a good conversation with me. If you're watching, you've already seen. If you're not, well, I'm in the building with singer, songwriter, instrumentalist, legal practitioner, Toto Bringer of It, first of all. Yes, and I love it. the <laughs> actress who was with me in the Again video but left me for Cohen JC. <laughs> And we know she's an actress because in real life, if she did that, I would say, I'm not letting go. <laughs> Isabel Yuji. <laughs> Welcome, Isabel. Uh, thank you. So great to be here. Isabel Yuji, ready to cause some Dalu. Yes. And be the crowned Kali Dalu person. <laughs> Bring it. So Next, be warned. Be warned. <laughs> Next to Isabel, I have Vibes Curator, total bringer of it as well, because I only brought people who bring it. Yes. Eh? He writes. Right. He acts. He yes. directs. He does. He, I, like I said many times after seeing this on Instagram, I was like, I have to say this here to you people, because he, many people try to go for radio, but radio chose him. Yeah. And once you know that, you will know peace. Yeah. It's the one and only Sami Wetala. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, brother. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here with the beautiful ladies and yourself. Yeah, hey, okay. Yeah. 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 I yeah. 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 <laughs> Curate like vibes and basically um, they have discussions that are going to impact the industry in one way or another. So, yeah, good yeah. to be here. Yes, and people, that is not all. If you think I am done, no, I have more in store for you. <laughs> no, but on the real though, we have someone who is who was our first ever guest on the Tribe G podcast. She's a rapper. Mm. She's also a total bringer of it. I repeat, everyone I've yes. brought is a total bringer of it. She is a playlist curator. She's a lover and supporter of Ugandan music, like everyone who is here. She is an entrepreneur who, you know, if you've been to some of those places, you need to be organized and go to the villa, the party, or the main. I mean, I mean, it's too much. It's too much. Please, next, leave some for us also. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's the Ninja Sea. She's back in the building. Hey. <laughs> hey, sorry. <laughs> like, let's do like invisible chair. No, firstly, thank you, Mark, because I got a follow from Missy. Oh. <laughs> You guys. I think, like, are we able to, like, Sam, are we in the corner, look like a... are we able to get, like, that, can I provide, like, a screenshot that you can put in a corner? Hey, you get because, it. Of, because of our conversation. We had a conversation yeah. and Missy engaged with us. So, guys. So, it's Missy, <laughs> it's Evie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a long list of, you know, um, Such know should celebrity followers. Some celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Sammy Wetala and, and Isabel UG. And Isabel celebrity no, followers. No, but that's <laughs> me. <laughs> but back, yeah. back, back, back to us here. Uh, loco, loco, you know, <laughs> loco, you forgot in Sammy's intro to add that he is the latest, mm. biggest bowler mm. in the country, events promoter, Pola, 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 Pola. one and only, Pola, Toto, Pola. Pola. like I said, Toto Bringa of it, he brings Bringa good things it. to you people, yeah. but Bringa guys, uh, whenever we start this podcast, we like to start on a light note, you know, we know ourselves, we may start asking some serious questions, uh, but before that, we want to just ask, how was your week? If you can tell me a song that resonates with how your week went, the soundtrack to your week, whether it's a song you over listen to, whether it's a song that just Only one. described how your song, how your week went, a Ugandan song. Yes. Only one. One. It can't be like two. Okay, you can say two. We'll so allow you because you're a repeat, okay. you're a repeat guest. So, <laughs> the first one is Tunji with a G, G energy. Mm -hmm. I just feel like sincerely, yeah. it gives you the zeal and the motivation to wake up in the morning. And it's self-explanatory. Everything he's saying in that song will get you through the Working. week. Okay. But That's then nice again, one. from Tunji with a G, sound like BB, Cavalli King, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. soft landing, so guys. Yeah. <sighs> I feel like, you know when you watch a star-studded movie? That's how I feel when I hear that <laughs> song. Like, everyone just came through. And with <laughs> such energy, like, like vibe. Mm. It's a, such a dope I, I like that she said the first song will get you through the week and the second one will give you a soft landing. Yes. <laughs> yes. I like how you yes. put that together. Yes. <laughs> Some so for me, it has to be um, Spider MC, um, mm. Abantum Kisa and Bother. I just love how 
he owned both songs. Mm. Um, Aban Tumikiza speaks to me directly. Yeah, he that's spoken about motivation. So for me, that has been one of those songs that have literally been rinsing. Mm. And <laughs> it speaks volumes to me. Yeah. <laughs> then Brother is just Viboyo and uh, Tushi Polo. And just how comfortable oh, it is to she. listen to the buzz in there, but mm. also the realism about these ladies, especially Kampala women, and what yeah. they have done to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not just throughout the week. But like, nice. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, those are the two songs that really have spoken to me heavily. Yeah, okay. For me, my week is like has been like two. First three days at, at work, and then Thursday and Friday I've been home, so... I've been listening to Touch and Continue a lot because I'm Touch really obsessed continue. with the second verse yeah. uh, and like how Elijah plays with with the words. And it's just something that for me at work, I just need energy to begin. So you'll find me at 8.30 a.m. and I'm bobbing my head and that was, that's my worst. <laughs> right. But then um, on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, uh, Gucci 2 piece drop. So yes. I've been listening to Rich. Because facts. Rich. Mubulamu twagala kubera. Twagala kubera ko rich. Yeah, like even my son is singing rich back to me at this wow. point. So, yeah, rich. anyways, it's vibes. Like it, yeah. Well, for myself, given the weather that we have endured all week with all this rain, and it's funny that you said touch and continue, because mine is also from Elijah Chitaka. And it's the weather for two. Because, you know, you be there and you want to, you know, kubira ya kawada. Kagame go out in my Stop shouting. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, on that note, uh, on that note, um, we are going into the next part of the conversation. And you guys have mentioned so many dope artists. And I want to ask all of you, what do you think, what do you like right now in the new Ugandan music that you're listening to? What do you like? Just as simple as that. What do you like? Ooh, what do I like? I, I, I think... Um, loving the collaboration that is happening. Um, be it a listening party, be it an EP, or be it, uh, you know, a single. There's a lot of community togetherness that is happening, and that's good for the industry. Um, sound like PB, um, whether it's Ty Dye, whether it's uh, Dennis C, whether it's uh, Malcolm, uh, whoever is dropping, there's just this energy that brings everyone together. And we can only build the industry when all of us are supporting the movement. So for me, that's uh, my number one thing that I'm seeing in the industry. Mm. The, the, the love within the industry and the fact that we know and we understand now more than ever that, uh, you know, a man can go only as far when he's alone. But mm. when you're mm. many, you go even farther. And blessings to everybody who's ensuring that uh, we are running this race as a community. Ooh, ooh, nice. I'm like, ooh, what are the rest of us going to say? Over to you, ladies. Together. No, still touching on what Sami's been saying for me. I think, especially this year, I don't know what was in the water when (laughs) January 1st hit, but with what I've been listening that's coming out, I like that it's different. You know what I mean? Different, not in the sense that A is A and B is B, but no, we're listening to variations of styles of genres that's coming out through the collaborations you guys are talking to about uh, so so coming out through the spaces you know some of that magic is happening live and it's because different kinds of people you've not seen them sing together or perform together but because they've had to do that something new comes up so for me i'm so excited about the fact that oh this person could sound like this. Oh, like I can give an example yeah. of Mike Mungu and I've been shouting about this. Like yeah. Mike, the range has been ranging for yes. years. <laughs> because once you hear Kajina, you're like, okay, this is what I expect from Mike Mungu. And then, you know, like um, his collaborations with Dennis C came out and you're like, oh, Mike Mungu can also do this. Yes. And then you're like, yeah, and I'm like, ah, this is still Mike Mungu. So like, that's something I'm really, really excited about. So like even Dennis C, um, you know who Dennis C has been and he's always been versatile. But then just listening to his his EP, mm. and you're like, every song is a different dynasty. Like the first track, dude was rapping. He yeah? was like, rapidly rap rap. Like, rap, 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 rap. I, like, I don't know if I've heard this about dynasty, but then you also listen to what he's done recently with Malcolm Guy, and you're like, the range is ranging so beautifully. I like, I like, I like this this phase. Yeah. So in conclusion, the range is ranging. The range is ranging. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia, what do you like? Because you've been like, you're a heavy supporter online every day. There's like a, a tweet of something, like a video in the car. Like a, so you tell us. You like that they're giving you car music, eh? I think, like, man, first of all, thank you. Because I keep getting like daily anthems. But also for me, I think 
two things, but the first thing would be active. Mm -hmm. Like the scene is active. Mm -hmm. People are busy. Mm -hmm. Even the stuff that you're not seeing, there's things that are happening behind the scenes mm -hmm. that are crazy. Yeah. Things <laughs> are being made all over the place. And for me, what makes me happiest, having been from, you know, the older era all the way into now and supporting the new wave, it seems that now both new wave and mainstream and people who have been around are all active at the same time. At the same time. You've this seen year is people interesting, like yeah. K-Pass Resurrect with 50 song albums. <laughs> and then you've seen people like Navio release a project and mm. continue to do like this whole documentary mm. about what's happening all over Uganda. Mm. And then you're seeing someone like Dennis C and Lagoon also mm. releasing mm. projects mm. and people like Bowman. So it's just... <laughs> what's you know, the, those three are on the same... In 24 hours, we had Dennis C, Lagoon and Bowman. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, you are so spoiled. For choice. It's active. It's yeah. active. And then we have projects, like I said, that are brewing yeah. that I don't even Ooh. think the masses Ooh. are ready for. And we it's just so nice to see because there was a time, I can tell you, and I keep telling people this, I unplugged from music as a whole, that whole industry, mm. and I plugged back in and it was like I hadn't missed a thing for two years. <laughs> like wow. There was That's a complacency. Yeah, yeah, there was a complacency. But now everyone, and that brings me to my next point, which is the intent to monetize. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's so much stronger this year. And it's very important because for the longest time, creatives had this attitude that my passion will lead me to get paid, which is a great um, <laughs> attitude to have. But there has to be a form of strategy to yeah, that. Because eventually, whether we like it or not, we're living in a capitalistic society. And for things to keep moving, you need money. You need money to release that project. You need money to do that video. You need money to... Live. There are people who live off of the money that they make from music. Yeah. So I'm seeing, just the other day we saw um, um, Akine's cover letter for her job. Ooh. Like you know when you're realistic Fire. about life and you're like, okay, I have this dream, but I need to support it. Yeah. You know. Then you have other people like Gucci Two Piece. They did an auction for a uh, you know outfit because they are like at the end of the day, we need to facilitate these things that we're doing, these events that, that we're passion. having. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, also as an entrepreneur, I'm like, okay, finally, we're getting to a point where we can make good music. We've all acknowledged we're mm. no longer having that same conversation about exportable sound. That one has died. <laughs> we have proven through different it's artists possible, yeah. and the range that is ranging, that <laughs> <laughs> we are good. Yeah. Yeah. Now that point aside, what are we doing with the goodness? Then you have people like Baraka who are just across the border. Pew, pew, pew. That is all active and monetization working hand in hand. And for me, I'm just like, oh, mashallah. And for that, because I did say all of you are good lovers of Ugandan music. So before we go any further and with what you've all just said about what you like, I always tell people, you guys be there. I be giving you playlists. I be telling you that this is nice or this person is nice. But I want you guys to tell people just... Three people who you think people should listen to. No need to over explain. Just tell them. You, and you people trust them. I believe them also. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 they're good. So, three I, people. I, I think um, now more than ever, and he has proved himself, people need to pay attention to BB. Uh -huh. You know, um, there's, there's a way his sound is extremely. Ugandan, but at the same time, is foreign, but at the same time, his sound is just himself. Mm. Sound, sound like baby. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and now more than ever, and you've talked about the issue to do with money, and money comes from influence, and influence comes from penetration, and penetration comes from familiarity. Mm. So the more people get to be familiar with his sound, the more his music is going to penetrate and the more his music penetrates, the more influence he's going to have. Because yeah. I, I feel like he's an artist who cannot be limited by our country's borders. He's an artist who can be consumed from a global stage. So Interesting. I, I would love that more people listen to him, get familiarized with his works. And now, to be honest, um, people consume more than just music from an artist. It's a whole lifestyle. Mm. It's, mm. it's, yes. It's a whole Yes, it's package. a total package, yeah. Total package. When people are talking about uh, the altar sound um, and the urban wave, we are buying into the music, but we are also buying into the fashion. We are mm. buying into the, yeah. way you, the, the way you dress, the way you talk, and all the other small things that, um, you know, attributed to you, 
when I talk about Ninja C, it's not just the rap that I'm going to get. Yeah. I'm also going to have a meal at the villa. I'm going to have a meal at, at, you know, the patio and all these other places because of what she's selling to me. Mm. And that's, for me, what I want people to see mm. and take home. That, yes, familiarize yourself with this artist, but go beyond just the music. You yeah. know, buy into all the other small things they do. You'll find so many artists... Um, actually artists like they draw <laughs> you know and those who are into fashion as well yeah. buy their merch as well so it's a whole project if she's a lawyer as well and she's also a musician as well yeah when you get sued left right and center I got you yeah. <laughs> yeah. let's go yeah. show the art yeah. and the artist, artist. As well. that makes so much Isabel sense. someone I think for me, you had said three people, so I had three people. Did you say three people? Oh, three or one? You, one, one. you said B. Okay, add. let's first go, then we go like Then you say one. One, one, one. Okay. One, one, one. Okay, so for me, my next person is Anna. You know Anna? Makula. No, an, Anna, yes, Anna Makula. Makula, oh. Her, her Instagram <laughs> is X A N T H E. But she plays guitar. She was part of, I think, Poa for a while. Was it mm. Poa? Um, she had a project that came out recently, earlier yeah. this year, really recently. Uh, personally, I'm really excited still with what I'd mentioned earlier with the range that is ranging. <laughs> and for <laughs> this particular artist, I'm just excited that there are other, you know, pros, alte, folk, singer, songwriter, you know, instrumentalist singers that are out there. And I get so excited when music like that comes out. I'm also just really impressed by her her gifts she she produces her own stuff nice. she she plays guitar she she writes amazingly she sings amazingly she's and you I, I, in a, like, <laughs> <laughs> like i couldn't say myself so let and me say that you relate heavy but i feel so bad that people are passing on jobo about her yeah. in the sense that people don't know her and i think also goes back to what sammy is saying sometimes to penetrate and influence and get people familiar with your music you need to be in certain spaces but at the same time, how how wide are those spaces enough for that kind of range of music? You know mm. what I mean? So I, I like that collaboration is kind of bringing those conversations up. For example, I was talking to people recently, I'm like, why is it that every musical event is at night and it's like loud? Mm. Like, can we have like acoustic things during the day? Can we someone have like... Someone chatted me that festival? yesterday. Like, can we have a <laughs> range of musical experiences? Yeah. So I feel that's going to allow so many more artists to come in, but go check out Anna. And I'm, I don't know, she's Mark. I, I don't know, it's Makula. I, Makula, I, think I, I, yeah. I listened to the album because someone sent it yeah, to me. Yeah, but it's an amazing. Yeah, yeah, I was I was like, she... mm, this guy stealing her name. <laughs> hey. Hey. Anna, Anna, Anna. Her Instagram thingy is X A N T H E, Anna Zanthe. I think that's how you say that. So you can find her there and listen to her music. Yeah. Currently, as, as you know me, I'm always, there are many, there, yes. are, there are many things. That's why we have to give you. I'm one. looking at Sente. Oh. You've taken my second answer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Well, he said Kampala women earlier. Yeah, said, you, know, <laughs> I, you know, he had me at Kampala women, you know. But one, as a hip-hop artist, um, the observation that I made last year was that we had a lot of hip-hop fusion mm -hmm. and very few, like, actual rappers oh. or people who were doing hip-hop, like, in its purity. I think he has the ability to rap, but... He's fusing it so well in a style that is exportable. Like, it's packaged so well. And he touches on very relatable topics. Now, like, you've just brought up Kampala Woman. I feel like that's a song that is an anthem for any person who has met a Kampala Woman. Or because is a why Kampala she woman. Meet one? <laughs> <laughs> And then also, like, his collaboration selection is really nice. Like yeah. his song with Maya Amolo, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you guys know, it's mm. no secret. I'm a big fan. Of Maya. I, feel, I feel like he's being very intentional yes. about mm. everything yes. that yeah, he's doing. I feel like doing. he's just started and he's really intentional. Uh -huh. And hip-hop artists, not to throw dags or anything, there are very few that are intentional. Most people just want to like put out their work, show that they can rap or express their ideas but they don't look at the full picture. So to him and his team, you know, whoever is working with him, they're doing a very amazing job. And I, I you know, like that new potential, like where someone just pops out of nowhere and you're like, where is this person doing? <laughs> <laughs> and where have they been all my life? I'm ready to see more. Yeah. Facts. yeah facts. Uh, uh, actually, with the same, it's funny that it's in the same style and same even kind of look alike. But um, there's a rapper, a young rapper called Nsokwa. 
And Nsoko has been, he released an album, he released his first album earlier this year uh, called 21, so you can see the young nature of himself. But uh, we've talked about it here on the podcast before, and I really like him. I really like that he's actually rapping, and then like his collaborations, the packaging, even the, 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 the way the album is arranged, those things that I like, like I've talked about it here on the pod, but like just for, for everyone's clarity, it's the fact that he puts like his serious thoughts, what, 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 in the beginning, then the Kobo Sinje has left him, so he collaborates with Mike Mungu there to say, Kobo Sinje, we are forever. Then he... <laughs> throws her away and leaves Mike and then goes for the songs with the homies, like the mm-hmm. happy, like, so basically, like, that type of being intentional, even in a, in a young project for a young mm-hmm. artist, to be that well packaged in the, in its delivery, I'm like, we should listen to Nsoko, so I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to him being done with school and ready to to actually rapidly rap mm-hmm. for us and we see, we see what he can do like, moving forward, so I'm looking forward to that, and on that, I have a question for you, Isabel, because, uh, as an artist, uh, I know we said earlier you actually mentioned EPs, which is good. Um, we have, we noticed that a, a lot of the time before there were always like, let's say longer projects, like a, a proper, like an album. And now, you know, there's an EP culture. It, we're now in the EP singles era. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering like, what do you think that is for you? Like what, I know, I don't know how, me, I'm looking at it from outside, but I'm like from an artist's perspective, how do you, what is the, the logic for it be for you? Yeah, I think it, it's it's super cultural and like um, the trends in how we digest music. I was reading an article yesterday, I think, uh, by Bloomberg Business as a study. With AI, there's a lot of material that can be synthesized suddenly. And they looked at um, the mainstream popular songs, so top 100 songs from the past 40 to, let's say, 35 years. And most, the, most of the songs, they realize the lyrics are repetitive. Um, the songs are shorter. The songs are much simpler as compared to maybe the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And the reasons they give for that is just we have a lot of music. We have short time to interface and have attention to music. So you need something quick, snappy, but I don't know, deep and artistic enough. And it's been a transition of artists kind kind of needing to find that sweet spot of how can I be as explorative and descriptive in how I'm feeling and what I'm putting out, but as fast as possible. Another way to say it is like, if you have a 30 minute pitch you can make for your idea, what's the elevator pitch, yeah? Mm. So I'd say it's like a lot of elevator pitch music. (laughs) And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just where we are at now. Um, As an artist, what I struggle with, cause you know, I'm super singer, songwriter songwriter heavy. Mm. And an EP is too short for me to, expound a theme. Mm. One of the reasons, I know people have been asking for music, I haven't released music since June, so that's not there. It's just my style of writing is very project oriented and I need about at least 10 songs to know. But now if it's three songs, four songs, you choose these ones, do them again, choose another. I'm just like, I'm not sure (laughs) what I need to do yet. But I think it's also been a great place for me to grow. it's it's so interesting because what you've said there, it's funny for me because as I was checking out the definition of EP, because we, I was like, let me just see like what it brings up because we know EP is you know it's it's extended play but it's funny because yeah. it's slightly longer than a single but less than an yeah, album. Play, yeah. That's that's the 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 thing. Mm-hmm. But in the first definition, I actually took a sc- screenshot because it was funny. Before clicking on the link, one of the things I see is it's it's less it's it's more non-committal. Yeah. And it's less cohesive, which is interesting because you've said you want to do like as an artist, you want to do something cohesive and you're committed to your art. So it's yeah. like normally I think in the past, I guess we can compare it to some of those mixtapes that people used to have mm-hmm. where before my album, since I'm quiet for now, let me first give guys a mixtape. But still there's mixtapes now, like yeah, so yeah, but it's it's circles, circles, circles you gave us, might delete later. Me, me and Jesse like gave us a mixtape. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so. No, but like, yeah, way back when, but it's like, it's like before guys be like, okay, since I don't have an album yet, as I'm working on it, let me yeah. first give these guys this guy. Some yeah? throwaway uh, jams. Uh, uh, some, 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 something, something. Yeah. Or, and like, or like Trey songs would do like, because he likes to rap, we do like a rapping mixtape and first give it to you, then he'll do his R&B mm-hmm. on the album. Mm-hmm. But like now, I look at it and I, I wonder, because I'm telling myself, most times you'd see, an, like I would expect to see an EP, then later the album. Mm. You know, like maybe it was just to keep, to, yeah, to warm our seats or something. Mm. But then now you just see an EP. But you see, also, I think it also goes from genre to genre. For example, EPs, mixtapes are a common thing in hip-hop. Yeah. 
like EP is essentially mixtape more so. Mm. So you'll find that for rappers, they are being non-committal <laughs> by doing that the that, that mixtape with what you've described, uh, anticipation that yeah. a bigger project, which is the album, yeah. will come. But specifically bringing it back here to Uganda, this is a new phenomenon. Yeah. EP's albums, it's completely new. For all of the time that I've listened to music, I can tell you that I've only started now digging deeper into full-length projects mm. in the last maybe five years. Mm. People in Uganda like singles. That is why the thriving artists like Chameleon and Bebe Kool, they'll give you one song a year. <laughs> and you will rinse that song. They will perform that song at every function, every event. Yeah. And that's all a Ugandan needs. And then the Ugandan moves on from that song. And then they need another song. The new um, artists, crop of artists, and also the new fan base is requiring more from each other. As an artist, you require your fan base to go and listen and take time to understand <laughs> your work. And because I know that as an artist, I'm also going to put in more work and more time into my project. Because I'm like, uh-uh, this Kawan song is not going to work for them. Soon they'll be asking me for something in the next two months. So let me sit down quietly in my corner, come up with 10. Or if 10 is too much, because life is life <laughs> we are busy, you know, you have so many commitments. Let me do five. Mm. Let them, you know, sit on that for a bit. I say what I needed to say in those five songs. And then we move. I get that perspective as well. Because, you know, you were just mentioning that the culture has always been very sing-oriented. And I think maybe Sami can add to this. Just radios. How we know artists, we just know that one song. It's a yeah. hit song associated with this. But at the same time, as remembering how when we're much younger, you'd see those those big billboards. You know those white ones that they paint on? <laughs> Come for this album launch at Hotel Africana. Yeah. And this message, Semakula or Ego's <laughs> production. And those guys actually sing their full-length songs and people know those songs. I remember I went for, was it, I think Winnie Nwaji's concert and of course, I only knew like her hit songs. She sang like 10 songs and there were people screaming word for word. You know what I mean? So I think it's a balance of you can make your decision as an artist and say, like Adele, you wait for two years but once the album comes out, it'll be long and you know, Brilliant, and you'll have enough to go for a while. But at the same time, where's the artist at? Can I afford to do that? Do I have the time to do that? Do I need more to build more on the familiarity that you're talking about? So it makes sense to just have singles out, to have um, EPs out. Another thing most record labels used to do is when you're introducing someone um, to the market, they begin with an EP because you're like, yeah, don't put them in a box. An album is too wide and too risky for how much you put in, not even just... Emotively as an artist, but also business-wise. Business Those wise. things are expensive. Financially, <laughs> It's yay. just cheaper to do a song and one video. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's get to the next one. So it's, yeah. it's so much mathematics, but I, I hear the perspectives and yeah. Uh, speaking of new shifts in the way people are doing things and new cultures and stuff like that, I have a question for Sami because as the media personality that is actively on radio, uh, how do you think, let's say, the social media and the... Uh, the streaming platforms and all that. How do you think that relates to the artists and the, let me say, the traditional media platforms like radio and TV? How do you think that is affecting? See, here's the thing. Um, people connect with art because of its connectivity. Yes. Mm -hmm. You get, um, and that's the culture right now. You're not just selling your art, Yes you are selling emotions and you're selling certain things that only a biologist can be able to understand, <laughs> or maybe a, a chemist, you know, that those electromagnetisms, whatever, whatever, whatever you put in the song, whether it's crack or whatever it is, as long as people connect to it, mm -hmm. they're gonna buy it. Yeah. Now the question is, how do you bridge the gap? How do you connect with the people? I will say this, um, what social media has done is you get a following and you get numbers. But those numbers sometimes can be manipulated and they're not real. Mm. The real music is consumed on ground. Mm. And that's why every artist, after putting out a body of work, the next thing in their mind is, I need to go on a tour. Yeah, yeah. I need to connect with people physically. Yeah. You get. 
the issue with streams it has also impacted how we consume music and that's how you know um uh, bodies of work come into play mm. what bodies of work do uh, for many artists again is just to stamp your feet and say you know what i need to connect to this artist but for me to connect to this artist one song is not enough mm. that's why singles fed so fast as opposed to bodies mm. of work yeah the range will always range mm-hmm. in a body of work yeah. as opposed in a single because yeah. in a single uh, unless you're going to feature yourself you say okay I'll rap at the same time I'll sing to it in a body of work you can do so many Funny. things yeah. you know so how we consume music to be honest uh, and and the issue to do with money we, we must not run away from it mm-hmm. is the fact that um the streaming platforms are somehow and for lack of a better word we've been positioned in a way that we cannot fight as much as other countries you look for example let's say a country like belgium belgium has 11.9 million people right how many people does you going to have over 40 44 45 yeah. exactly but do you know in average the amount of money that spotify pays belgium well i was shocked to find and and in fact you'll have the entire africa they get more money in belgium than than yeah. in africa with more numbers why is that so again numbers are very important the math has to math mm-hmm. at the same time but then again how we consume the music has totally changed yeah. you will ask yourself why is it that in uganda's sick yeah the artists that are flourishing in terms of you know they're being played here and there radio is playing them in the clubs are being played they're at the same time the same artists that are flourishing on tiktok and then for lack of a better word the artists that are making good music they find it so hard to penetrate the airwaves mm. so we must bridge the gap what is this it's no longer enough for you to be talented there are other things you must do and you must market yourself yep. and even the marketing is just not enough you mm. must be in people's faces mm. people are just buying more than your art yeah. and that's how it is mm. i think to touch on that essentially streaming platforms and social media was a way for the artists to have a voice and yes. control their own narrative Thank as you. opposed to signing to a label or having a manager or cuz social media is something like you can do yourself like an independent distribution exactly. kind of thing. you're doing every you can do it yourself if you decide yeah, yeah. Right? Mm. you get you pick your two three main social media platforms that you're going to push yourself on yeah. and you do it as opposed to before where you needed to have a leg through the TV station a yes. leg through the radio, radio station, station yeah. but now as time has gone on we are all used to that narrative you're an uh, artist you've come on the scene you're doing your social media you're doing your streaming platforms there has to be more to it yes and that's where hard work comes in self promotion comes in yeah. and this is something i have preached even on the very first episode on the tribe mm-hmm. and i was affirmed in these beliefs because i started to think watching the new wave the way they were moving was changing the narrative and it worked for the time but then i've noticed that it reaches a ceiling Always. right yeah. there's a cap to which that kind of promotion goes that means we must continue to go above and beyond and i saw um saudi souls um bien talking yes. about this and he was saying as Saudi saw they are big but as him he's an upcoming artist thank you yeah. like you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. and imagine someone like bien <laughs> at the level yes he is an upcoming artist but he is still part of Saudi so if yeah. he feels the need to go to that club to go to that radio station yes. to do that extra push then who are the rest of us you know what i mean yeah. same thing with like literally it's crazy but all of the artists that i would imagine would sit back and relax and do the least be doing the most yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you're like guy you have 30 years under your belt you're still doing interviews I, i like that you're saying that because one of the things i've said here before and it's very interesting like you see someone like if we look at our ugandan industry we all know navio and we know who he mm. is and he's been mm. active mm. i mean he did a 20 years of navio concert the other day mm. oh, okay last yeah, year <laughs> but uh, but uh it's 20 years of being active and of course it's been slightly more but let me say that's the 20 official years mm. but that's the guy who is still in the studio who is still going for stuff who he puts in so much work and people I, i've seen people complain ah, why always navi and i'm like guys you have to understand that as long as he keeps putting in that work and yeah. me mark the upcoming guy i'm not doing it 
they are still going to pick Navi because he's still putting in the work. It's really as simple as that. So what, and you, you notice that even with the younger people, once they put in the work, let's of I course the like obvious the example is Joshua. Yeah, the uh, combination of talent. And, and the that. tools that we currently yeah. have, yeah. plus hard work, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, like that visual yeah. is, 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 is mind-blowing. And I don't want people to take this out of context and say that the methods that they are currently using are not working. <laughs> they are, but they need, need to, to be supplemented. Yeah, supplemented it, because yeah. also there's this mentality, and I have to speak on this because I'm hugely invested, as everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're appealing to your circle, or community yeah. or friends doesn't mean that that should be the goal. And I feel like that's why things like touring, for example, like just talking to different people, a bit of the exposure will then show you that you have two intentions to express yourself and to break through. Now, breakthrough doesn't mean that the whole world must know you. <laughs> it's the way you, you're doing your music, is it permeating even places that you never expected or people never expected? And it doesn't have to be loud. Yeah. You know, I've seen people like Mwami, whose music permeates in all sorts of places, and he's like the quietest, per quietest person, yeah. Yeah. but there's that appeal that it will have outside of Uganda, yeah. right? And then I've also seen other artists who are good, but they are okay with just the cheering of their... They're not looking... Don't be okay, man. Yeah, you, like they, there's a bigger goal eventually, yeah. and we need to... If that's your aim. If your aim is to just put out music for you and the homies, that's also okay. But like, uh, then wait. don't... Then don't then don't be now like oh you know they we have been working for ten years. No, and no, Ninja. See, allow me to say, you know, I've always told people, I understand putting stuff for your friends and releasing it and giving it to them. But I always say, if your music is for the WhatsApp group, you drop it in the, in the WhatsApp group. The moment you start putting it for the rest of us to access, then we are looking at you as the rest no, of so us, <laughs> not just your WhatsApp. If it's for the WhatsApp group, put it in the WhatsApp group, please, it's okay. But if you decide to release it, release it and put in the work. Because I said this when we were with Kenneth Mugabe um, last week. I'm like, we, we are fans first. Like whatever we do, like me who listens, when I'm listening, I'm being a fan. And when I'm a fan, I want to consume the fullness of your art, like of you, of what you have to offer, what you do. Like different artists, are different, like, you know, there are people who you're not maybe going for live or whatever because maybe they're not a live performer. Maybe their music is for your headphones in the bedroom and you just be there and cry. But uh, others, you need to see them live because that's their thing. Maybe that's mm. their strong point, that's their strength. But like whatever it is that you do, whatever it is that your thing is, I'm interested in it and I'm invested in it because you brought it to me. Now, me, I was there minding my business and you dropped and now I'm hooked. So we, we are really willing to, we, like, we are willing to support, we're willing to engage, but we need to see that you care because I can't care more than you. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> I can't care more So than exhausting. You. Yeah, and there's that thing of um, we are too cool, you know, or this is how we the urban wave, this is how we make our music, you know, this is how uh, we sell our music, this is how our music is consumed. And they're okay with the fact that, you know, um, a restaurant, you know, and have my small listening party and I've done it all, you know. No, th the music has to be consumed. And for me is, look at what the pop culture is doing. They are coping everything that you're doing right, and now they're adding pop to it. <laughs> yeah. They are popularizing whatever you're doing. Yeah. We used to copy the guys who were doing Alti. You'll understand the way the, the way they were dressing, you know. Mm -hmm. And now even the popular artists are like, huh? So this is how you street, do. Street it's, wear. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do that as well. Mm -hmm. So if a popular artist is doing, is copying all the means that have been working for you, why don't you also copy what is working for the popular artists, such that your music is out there even more? Because these guys are going to look at what is the hairstyle that is trending? <laughs> what is the, you know, the fashion that is trending in that Alte or Urban Wave culture? Let me do that. And marry that into my popular, you know, look mainstream. and mainstream. And I do that. So copy what the guys who in the popular world are doing and also marry it to you. And just see how it will affect uh, the way we, with which your music moves. I, I like that because one of the things that people have been talking about a lot online lately Maybe not in the best way, so we'll just have a more organized version of that conversation. Uh, guys have been talking about the way in which 
DJs and artists. I've been seeing a lot of back and forth and arguments and things like that. But um, DJs and artists, there's been a lot of back and forth of DJs versus artists, which is funny to me because in my head, it's DJs with artists. Like, that is how I look at it. I don't understand. I'm like, both of you move together. So I don't understand why there's a sort of versus uh, narrative sometimes. But as an artist, I want you to say what you think on the whole and how we can improve, especially as the younger people that are out there listening and how people can reach the people they need to reach. Yeah, I think DJs versus artists is like Godzilla versus King Kong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's really awesome to watch two big guys fighting CGI in an IMAX <laughs> theater. And, like, um, I think it goes back to what, especially these two have just been talking about. If you can't expose yourself to the new levels that can be there, even Elephant might be fighting in, in, in the zoo thinking, I'm such a Godzilla. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. Um, so it's not about who we are and what we are doing and the power we have. It's it's a machine that changes. There's international artists who are goats that at 40 years, they still had to reinvent themselves to stay relevant. You can't say, oh my goodness, this is my traction. Do you know who I am? Do you know how many Grammys I have? Da, 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 da. They still find it relevant to do so in a way that makes them interesting. And I think we've sure. taken that really, really... Um, Simply and for granted in, in so many means. So for someone who wears the music business hat as a lawyer, but then also the artist, I can still empathize with the fact that in Kampala, the only levels you can understand are from Kampala. If the biggest thing to do in Kampala is throw a concert at Serena, that's where my objective is going to be. But if I get on a bus and go to Nairobi and see the scene there, if I go to Chigali, if I go to Los Angeles, if I go to London, if I spend enough time on YouTube, man, if I spend <laughs> enough time on people's social media and 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 then trust to be courageous because still this Godzilla versus King, King Kong of DJs versus artists, there's a big aspect of courage that's lacking. Mm. We don't have to need DJs and DJs don't have to need artists. Mm. I mean, the biggest producers in the age from 2008 to about 2013, 14, when the EDM waves started coming down. They just brought the best of each other to both worlds. Like, David I Dutta. know how to make beats from 120 BPM to make people, like, feel euphoric. Do, 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 do. You know how to add some words to it. Let's do something. There you have, um, I don't know, David, David Guetta, Guetta and, and someone, Kelly you know. Orland. But right yeah. now, if I'm like, I'm because da David Guetta's uh, whole thing was, he's been a DJ since the early 80s, you know. But it's on that traction that he came and said, can we collaborate? I can do this for you. You can do this for me. And it wasn't even the sense of you bring your song. Let me give you my set. It was, let's, let's have something this. new. This is an album. You know yeah. what I mean? And still when you hear David Guetta songs. Um, when Love Takes Over. You know, I am Titanic. I'm <laughs> like all those things are still uh, an expression of how much Godzilla versus King Kong does not help because we'll just see destruction and be like, wow, you're so great. But like, let's expose ourselves. Let's empathize with ourselves. It's difficult to be, I'm just like personally, just have all this stuff to do. And I'm like, man, I don't even know how to like do it real properly. And you're telling me I have to go to TikTok and, <laughs> and learn how to do this stuff. It's so stressful to me, but the reality is a reality. If you need gotta to do what you gotta do. sell tomatoes in a tomato stand and you need a better stand, man, you, you work out how to how to do that. Um, so I think it's more of taking it to a business level and balancing that support in community. I think what's even more appreciated is support, like telling people you're being a baby right now. Think about this bigger. Um, you're being unprofessional. You're being unethical or... This is great resources, but in the wrong direction. For these reasons, you can take it or leave it. They have another perspective. But right now, it's it's more of I'm um, the big name. It's I'm big in my WhatsApp group. I'm big <laughs> like they made yeah. me admin. They made me admin. <laughs> so it's it's life, man. Like it's just life. You just need that maturity. So to the DJ, I know we have amazing history with DJs mm. uh, and what they've achieved and how they've pushed different ranges of music, but. 
there's more. Let's lift up our eyes. She, you know what I mean? I think she, for she, me... She, she, wait, wait. She said something about the tomato stand. stand and yeah. I just want to say that this is our tomato stand of the Tribe G podcast. Oh. And if you Please want to continue to support <laughs> the podcast, fun. you can send some somebody to 624404. That is 624404. No, I'm glad you actually brought that in because it's going to touch on what you've just said. Touch and, and what, continue. Yes, and what Isabel said in the sense that Platforms like these, people don't understand the relevance and the depth and why they need to happen. If we do not have constant conversation, we will not grow, we will not learn, we will not build, right? There has to be, just like how in parliament there's opposition, there has to be voices that speak up or give their experiences for people to be able to See that you know what I'm going through is not unique to mm-hmm. me, it's not unique <laughs> to the other person. That being said, you know, I think in Uganda, culturally, we have a problem of supporting. You know, we we don't know how to support each other. First, first zone down into what you mean by that support. Like we don't show up for people, we don't As advise in, constructively. Yes, we are. And this social media has really brought this to light in that we are more hell-bent on bringing each other down than supporting each other. This support that we currently have, it's a new, slowly growing, you know, culture. Because, and this is not to throw digs at Ugandans, but just in comparison to, for example, Lagos. Lagos is just a, a city in Nigeria. And how those people get behind their people, you know? In Kenya. Yeah, Nairobi is a good example. I love, I, I don't know if you guys, Blinky Bill. Yeah. yeah. I, what happened with this listening party in, in January? Yo, <laughs> the whole Nairobi showed exactly. up for now Blinky. That, uh-huh. Now that's what I'm coming to. Machine. That's a word you mentioned. The music industry essentially is a machine. In the machine, there are different parts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The different parts all need to show up for the machine to work, for the industry to grow. Now, if you're going to be there with your ego, and you're like, I'm a DJ, if you have a new song, email it to me, and then that's when I'll play it. You don't have the initiative to look. How come it that you look for those Nigerian songs? <laughs> How come? And you download them off YouTube or wherever, or pay for them. But a Ugandan song is out and you are waiting for the artist to email to you. become a big deal. You're telling me that Thursday is the biggest song right now and everyone is talking about it and for you, you're waiting to be emailed. Honestly. For me, on, on and that... And then you're on, a, an artist. You want your song to be played outside of your WhatsApp group. And you're not going And there. you're not sending it to the DJ. <laughs> honestly. It works both ways. That's you know? what I was going to say. Yeah. You're a media personality. You know that right now, Elijah Chitaka is one of the biggest artists that's out, that's mm. pushing music and all that, you wait for him to look for you to call him for an interview, or you're Elijah Tucker, and you know that awareness will only come if you get on that TV, get on that, and then you wait to be called. At the, you get, like, everyone needs to play their part. Machine. Like, everyone needs to play their part. And when DJs say artists don't support them, instead of bashing them, you just listen to what they're saying. What are they saying? Me, when I have my set, guys don't come to support me. And yet for me, when their songs come out, I'm the first person playing them. And So we all need to come together and push. That, that is why I said at the start of this, it's so funny for me to see a conversation that is looking like DJs versus artists, artists. instead of DJs with artists. artists. Because it's like boys versus this, girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's, like, it's one of those things that is so interesting to me because exactly what you've said, it's you need... Everyone needs to do their part for the machine to work. Because guess what? When you see, And it's funnier even for me when it's a younger DJ because I'm like, we have our named DJs that have been whoever they've been forever. We have the Cusses, the Selective Js, the Aludas, whoever it is, Femme, it doesn't matter. We have a lot of people who have been there and they've done their thing for ages and their name is their name. But then we have the newer DJs that are pushing. 
new wave of DJs as well that is pushing and putting in work. You know, we talked on a panel together last time and we we all gave a name. I think uh, you did mention Boogie. Uh, Sammy. Boogie's doing a great job. Um, Alza is doing a fantastic yeah. job. Iraq is yeah, close. Yeah. Jevas. Jevas. Yeah. I did not say his name. Shout out. To, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. In the spirit of what we're saying, shout out to DJs that really stand up for urban new wave music. Yeah. Yeah. Marco, it's Slaughter, Ellie, all of them. Yeah. crazy. It, it's, it's so interesting that the people are there and maybe my thing would be, we need to read the room in one way or another. For instance, we know what, the, like, let's say Chapat. Chapat consumes Ugandan music in every form. Mm. Yeah. But... Chapat plays mostly uh, an ama piano, Afro house, whatever. Yeah. So basically, and I'm using his example because at least there it's it's safe. But like basically, you don't go to Chapat expecting your new song to be played in his set. Yeah. Maybe you go to him for something else because he has a lot more to offer. Maybe but, you look into that. Also, but once you read you the room doing, and plan, if you're doing, it, you know where to go. If you're doing Afro house, ama piano, Ugandan music, like there's that song Tonde Ka by. Yes. Kavali King and, and Joshua Baraka. Yes. Why would you not send your song to Chapat? Yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, Chapat like, plays read Zala the room. Yeah. the Baru uh-huh. project. Read the room and, and, and also it Once comes you down know, to strategy. Know. Yeah. <laughs> to strategy. strategy is everything, man. Everyone needs, I think, and that's why I was saying these platforms are very essential and we need to meet more. Everyone, all the stakeholders need to come in, up all the way up to promoters. And that's why, th- that's why I come Promoters. here. I've well, been, I've you been, are next on my been, list. Yes. I've, been, I've been privileged to just um, push the narrative in one or another and just connecting the artists to the DJs mm. um, from where I sit. Mm. And I'll tell you this, um, what the artists are saying is correct and what the DJs are also saying is it's correct. correct. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, guys, because of the muscle and the financial power that they have, mm. they're not just pushing these uh, songs via email. Mm. Mm they're pushing it on ground as well, mm-hmm. you know? And for me, it's not enough for an artist to send a song to a DJ via email. Yeah. No, find out, have a strategy, because I've, I've developed a strategy and I've worked with artists who have done that as well. Mm. Just have a, a rotor, sort of, you know? Cast Baby's playing here, da, 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 playing here, playing here, playing here, playing here. Let me go and have connection. Like we've said, it's good for people to consume your music online, but... Nothing beats a physical connection. connection. And that's why people, after mm. dropping albums, mm. they're like, I need to go on tour. I need to meet my fans, you know, face to face. It's the same thing with music. Don't just send your music on email and you chill. With no, no. high, no subject nothing. line, no, <laughs> nothing. Nothing. no picture, you no. Know? Just nothing. straight up audio. MP3. Uh, <laughs> not where even wait. So <laughs> is, where he's playing. Go chill, listen to their set, blah, blah, blah. And have an understanding. That's when you'll know, hey, this one is an Amapiano DJ, so to speak. You get. So-and-so is likely to play my song. You get. So that's the person you connect with. You know, bro, what's up? Whatever, whatever, whatever. I really love what you've done. Blah, 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 blah. I'm an artist. I'm so-and-so. Blah, 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 blah. Here's my song, eh? Take a listen to it. When you find, you know, ways within your set, you're going to play it, please spin it for me. So it's a DJ connecting with the artist and the artist connecting with the DJ. This business, to be honest, Nigerian artists, they are sending their songs to email. And they are, they, they are accompanying, they, they take an initiative, you know, oh, what do you have? You, you have a night out? Let me post it on my Instagram. They slide in DJ's DMs mm. on Instagram. Super proactive. Whatever. Yeah. You, you understand? So be active and put in the work. Move. If you have to move from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, just make sure I've connected with like 20 DJs. Out of the 20 DJs, maybe two or three will play your track. But and that's two or place. three more than and this before. Is not, <laughs> yes. And this is not a personality thing. You yeah. know, there are some people who are like, ah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not like, going out type. <laughs> I, I don't think that Joshua Baraka is a uh, going yeah. out type person, essentially. He's a mellow. But he's he needs mellow. to do what he needs to do. Yeah. I've seen him be from Monday to Sunday Thrones. night out. Silos, exactly. do whatever, silo, mezzo, push. where, and push, he, blah, and blah, blah, blah. He, and he does, doesn't show up. He has friendships, with connections. My yes. first conversation with him was randomly in a bar, and yeah. I'm like, oh, so he just to dropped get something, out. and we he was We need to there. get out of, for me. Comfort zone. For me. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying Mommy this as on. ninja, see? <laughs> yeah. But I know I speak for so many people. Please, clickism in music if you're trying to get out of the clique. We are not a high school. If you're trying to get out of the hood. If you're trying to get out of the, clique, the, 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 the WhatsApp group. Mm. 
It's not going to help you. It's not going to help you. And and uh, and artists need to understand this. Nobody owes you airplay. Nobody does. Because we're living in a world of over 7 billion, maybe 100 million uh, musicians. And uh, out of the 100 million that are musicians, there are artists who will release albums. And you'll find like the whole 12-track album has like 10 powerful songs. Yeah. And the DJ has no choice. But to play, play like, <laughs> at least six. <laughs> so why would I think and say, you know what? Let me play Isabel's song. I, I, I like that particular line because we were here with Kenneth last week. And one of the things he said is, one of his issues early on um, was he f- he was entitled feeling, and I like I like to use his example because he is a whole Kenneth Mugabe. But like he felt like because I'm good, eh, I'm entitled. I feel like you you <laughs> should listen to me, and he realized that no, what was wrong there is he should have been trying to find a way to get the people to actually listen instead of thinking they should. And that's why he said one thing that everyone should know is. No one owes you anything the same way you don't owe anyone anything. Yeah. Zero, so it's, it's zero it, entitlement. It, it's zero percent. So we're all starting together. We all move together. But also, you've all said everyone needs to understand that it's all of us, the moving pieces, getting mm-hmm. our work done together. But also, for artists, DJs, musicians, whatever it is, promoters, all of us, this is business. This is jobbo. And just like in any other job, there's networking. Yes. Thank you. I am here seated with three of you. We started uh, Meets and Beats. All three of you have been to, <laughs> to Meets and Beats. Like, uh, Cynthia has Patio Stars. We've done Patio Stars. There are people, there are others. We have uh, expressions. Maybe we've gone to that. We've listened to radio. We've talked about, um, like, m- making people express and talk about you and learn more and say more. Sami, you have some of my favorite intros, like when an artist is on your thing. I've, you. I've listened to some dope stuff. But I was even talking to an artist uh, recently who was like, yo, Sami is mad. Like the guy reminded me of some stuff about me that I had forgotten. <laughs> That's Sami. <laughs> That's Sami. He was like, That's I had Sammy. forgotten. Yeah. And then this man reminded me That's of That's Sami. Thank you. <laughs> but do you notice so that? Dope. All of the qualities you're mentioning about the different people are people who are not going to say, I'm a DJ, let me hang with my DJ people. Uh, yes. I'm a presenter, <laughs> let me hang with... These are people who are cutting across yeah. all of the, you know, the different fields in music. Mm. But if you say, you're going, I'm an artist, I'm and a rapper. Uh, <laughs> they're not rappers. <laughs> hey. No, but speaking to what you just said about Sami, my first TV interview at NTV Beats was it Sammy? I don't even know Sammy if you remember this. I do remember. <laughs> this was with Kenneth's song, uh, Wuyo. Wuyo. I love that song. And me, I'd gotten used to this thing, or oh, people call me Isabella. Oh, we have in the studio Elizabeth. She has this <laughs> song. I was like, oh my God, you don't even know my name. And then what is this album? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, Sammy knew little grown-up child. He knew, <laughs> he could say the album. He knew songs on the album. He knew, like, what I sound like. I was like, I've never found uh, a presenter Who's this well researched? Yeah, yeah, they don't need to be because what show is, is bigger than NTV at that time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just like you're even so privileged to come here, like, yeah. okay, hi, say hi, look at the people and go away. Sammy ask questions. I was just like, this is the best interview of my life. Yeah. Yeah. It's again, it goes back to what we're taking, uh, what we're talking about. And for me, it's, it's connection. You know, I've just realized that the culture of community is built on. Connection, connection, connection. connection. Um, um, in Kenya, they always say Safaricom is the better option. And here we have uh, everywhere you go, MTN will be there. And then, you know, there are all these things. So connection is everything. You need to connect with the art. That will give you a window into their artistry. And then you'll be able to stand and say, you know what, let's have a conversation because I've connected with your art even before I meet you. And that's why the, the whole conversation on online and on ground and on air comes, how people connect with you. It, it's amazing when you look, um, ask Joshua or you ask um, Mwami or you ask Bibi and tell them to give you the stats. Who is listening to their music and from where? They know. You, you know, you'll see uh, th- there's a certain pattern, you know, and, and shout out to the people in Nairobi for consuming oh. the urban wave music. Oh. You understand? And even while we're here and we are admiring what is happening in Kenya, they also have very key challenges. Mm. When yeah. was the last time you had, you know, a Kenyan artist has a concert? Yeah. Like a whole full-fledged concert. You will find it's the same culprits. You'll find Sauti Soul. Mm-hmm. You'll find Nyashinsky. Mm. 
but you know but here in Uganda we are very privileged Kenneth Mugabe will have a sold out show yeah you know um uh, the blue three will do the same the navias will do the same you know when was the last time a Kenyan hip hop artist had a whole show do you know what is happening in Kenya the artist only perform in bars yeah you know or in a show where you're just headlining of, yes a exactly. featured artist yeah. but mm-hmm. here in Uganda we can organize we, them. and that's why for me when people talk about support Ugandans actually support on mm-hmm. that note you guys exactly. August 26th at Serena Isabel UG will be in concert hey! Hey! Oh! wait what <laughs> she's just joking I'm she's like wait I'm saying I'm saying I don't even know better note that's where we're going that's where we're going no but what I'm no, saying is that should that, be the goal yeah like yeah. if yeah. I wanted next year I could by the way Thank if I could do work to do and we should support you with 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 a lot of energy and stuff like that you check how many times have you gone to Lugogo and the place you feel speaking that Kenya, that doesn't talk uh, we, have, we have made that note by the way what's <laughs> happening <laughs> so ugandans are actually showing up for this concert yeah. all you have to do is ask yourself do i have the content you yeah. understand tomorrow we're going to be having maybe Joshua Baraka live in concert That's... mike mungu live in concert and also on blocking, all these other people and also blocking out the noise you know today when i saw this reporter interviewing irene because she announced mm, her show yeah and then he was like trying to tickle the issue of you know IJ and will Juliana be there and she said listen me I'm here to promote the show thank you I don't have a beef with anyone anyone can come and the guy kept you know probably and she said the the kind of drama you're trying to pull me into to I don't have time uh, <laughs> you know sometimes also because of that thing that I mentioned earlier that we have as Ugandans and maybe we need to work on blocking out that noise you know that extra unrelated higi haga <laughs> and focus cream cum 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 and focus on the issue at hand the yeah. issue at hand is i am alien skin i'm a big artist i have six dope songs i want to do a show don't now start beating people yeah to get traction for the show that is yeah. unrelated we were we, going to come regardless focus on the art yeah. yeah the beefs okay you know there's this orchestrated beef where you see people are doing it and it's working it's yeah. exactly that's fine but here where things you know people have died from altercations yeah. like that like some of it is unnecessary noise let's do what we have come to do <laughs> you are a musician you are a presenter you are a dj let's work thank you and i like how you. you've said that because guys let's work let's do what we have come to do but idea. there's so many dope people doing some dope stuff we're all fans like i said we're all here because we are fans everyone here shows up and shows out you've mentioned that ugandans do support and it's funny because um i think after was saying that on the first episode of this season and she's like people say you got ugandans actually support yeah. it's just a, about you knowing who are the ugandans that are there for mm-hmm. you because even your music like for instance isabel has a a niche style but of mm-hmm. course she has the songs like i told her more than once last year she released songs and i'm like oh these ones i don't care who i know is of that style and they love it this was this was i'm taking them to all of them yeah. but at the end of the day once you know who you're targeting with which songs then you know where to take them mm-hmm. then you don't get that disappointment it's all about knowing where these things fit and where these things sit but we have been serious for some time now and i've decided <laughs> that it's time for me to destroy all this and lighten the mood again Alrighty. with some small small questions questions for all of you but Games. one by one <laughs> i will start with you ninja c because it's you are terrible you are games, you no, guys. It's, it's very it, it's okay, quick it's fire it's quick fire it's not for winning points small small quick fire quick it's fire cool. no context Wait, is it easy that? mental block they ask you a question you're like hmm? no don't worry this one is either also you, you just pick one of the answers okay okay, okay. <laughs> okay but it's not an easy though but anyway let me start easy easy i'll start yeah, easy artists? pizza or burger Mm. Pizza. Band or instrumental? Ba- uh? Band or instrumental? No, sorry, ba- like uh, performing. If you want to do the beats, band, okay, band like, or oh, beats. Band, 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 mm, band, band. Okay. Anyway. And the last one for you, this is just for you only. The last one for you. Keko Oyala. Oh, really? I really Surely. tell her this to you. I tell her to you. I tell her to you. I'm sorry. After the answer, just give the, the reasons why and that. Uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I no, 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 put no, no, her on the spot. It's okay. It's okay. Answer. That has never had an answer while lying. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> Those... Last week I told Kenneth, Gasani <laughs> 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 or Nachi. 
<laughs> Kades, I was like, nah, you people. <laughs> I know. No, that's really the same. Like, uh, <laughs> No, no, that's I know they're really one. they're but two okay. arguments for okay. you. You know, let you me be objective. Let me give. Yeah. Let me be objective. You can say mm. both and, and then say two nice I, things about them. Clearly, my conflict shows that both of them are mm. dope artists. Which that's is why, why he chose asked it. me that question. <laughs> yes. um, but I'm gonna say Yala in the sense that she's been doing it longer, and she's still like relatively active. Like she's uh, maintained her consistency over the years, and she's international. Mm. Mm. So just based off of that. However, <laughs> why it doesn't stand is because Keiko is coming. Yeah. She's about to get active again and she's going to go international. So you get uh, it's two peas in a pod for me. Okay, yeah. we, we shall take it. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny for Sami, it's funny that the first, like an easy one that I wrote for him, mm -hmm. he talked about it earlier uh -huh. uh, uh, well, with regard to weather because my easy one for him was, since the weather has, it was hot oh. and people are complaining and then now it's raining so I was like, what are you asking rain or kasada? Um, I rain any day. He mentioned rain. it earlier. It's so cool, funny. Actually, so. I actually come from a clan <laughs> called Baidifuma which pretty much means uh, rainmakers. So, oh. yeah, we literally love the rain <laughs> and the cold weather. It's deep. <laughs> yeah. Well, my mom, is, I, like I've said on the pod before, her clan, which is, I guess all of us, we're Balomi, which is the talkers and, well, when you have a oh, sister really? in, bra in, in PR, no a brother, Wait, in marketing, a brother as a well, rapper, and here I am. We have a yeah. Me and my clan is Calabash Monkey. I don't know what that has to do. <laughs> no, it's maker. Okay, all I know about I mean, my clan is we like meat, but you so that's but not a lie. We eat, well, on my dad, it's, it's Mamba and Kobe. But like, I'm, I'm a Kobeist oh. and also I'm a Pisces. I don't know if that counts because... But anyway, uh, let's. Uh, sorry, I, I've gone off back to our thing. Rain, because I know he said rain. Rain. Um, writing or directing? Mm. Mm. Well, next one for you. Mm. Mm. That is nice. Writing. Mm. Yeah. Right. And lastly, for you, you still. explain why. Yeah. Because you can only direct what has been written, <laughs> but you cannot write what has not been Just directed. Girl. So if you already fumbled with the writing, what's the point of directing? Yeah. Like, it, it, it's so funny because you know, I asked Kenneth, music or theater, and he said, music, music or theater. theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But anyway, and the last one for you, Sammy, is radio MC or events MC. What do you. Mm. Radio. I, I yeah, I know I've taken a break from radio right mm. now, but radio, because I mean, you get to be a conversation starter and you get to pour out yourself. And the beauty about it is you don't see the person you're speaking to and you're only speaking to one person. So you're having an honest conversation while an events MC, man, you gotta hype the crowd. And you're <laughs> looking at the people and you're like, okay. So a lot of the things you're doing is just, okay, I need the energy to come out. Mm. While on radio, you can actually be very vulnerable, mm. which is powerful. Yeah. I like that. Sophie, you're a oh, giver. That's so nice. Deep answer, I like that. Hello, yeah. over to you. Hello, the one who left Zero, me. Yeah. <laughs> lawyer, lawyer. Sir. First of all, this one is funny because she'll know. Chicken or pork? <laughs> uh, should I first explain why I'm yeah. laughing? Yeah. 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 <laughs> In your clan, they are pork eaters. <laughs> so when we're shooting the again video. Our breakup scene. Our breakup scene was like one of the most fun things to do. And the direction we're receiving from Mr. Felix was... I need you guys to look angry and yeah, you know, Let's argue. Quarrel. So we started arguing. We began. We were looking for topics to argue. So we started arguing about chicken. We said we said we I always think about my, my spicy chicken wings. You're like, oh my god. That's why you don't even have spicy wings. Why can't you that like pork? Is pork better. Like, other <laughs> so the guys outside, like the guys filming, were dying, and he broke character I, I, like I, ten I, times. We like had to film it like. So they broke well, up with you because... We, we broke up quarreling. You don't like, eat... In the video, it looks like we're having a, a couple... Yeah. Where you're like, you're cheated, like, why did but you, what I'm talking like, about is like, is, how can you support how Manchester support United? United? Like, that is the... And then, I don't know, it was... Chicken wings. Chicken pork. wings, yeah, you're so bougie. Is that what you grew up in? Just because you grew up in Kololo, I in broke Kololo out in laughter. I'm supposed to be sad that she's living. Just because you grew up in Kololo, I died. So is it pork? For you, I spoke. I, I wanted to confirm if she was just saying that in the video no. to, have to spite to meet, you, eh? Or, or it's real? <laughs> or if it's real? Pig. Okay, Pig. okay, okay. Pig. Um, hmm. Guitar or keyboard? Oh. 
piano actually piano eh? so i like distinguishing between keyboard and piano i like the weight of the keys mm. the sound of a the we are professional the yes. mm. deep, deep, deep so a piano i can live with the piano by myself keyboard i warmed up to it guitar i can i, I don't mind if i never play it again wow piano, piano. interesting Sorry, i just i just got like a flashback of when Ian said that he can play the bisania <laughs> and I just want to say drums. Ian <laughs> <laughs> when you are a professional musician you have to differentiate the guy said you know, know the that difference between a keyboard and a piano don't call drum sets bisania <laughs> and that is why Ian is not here today <laughs> and I brought some cooler people who know the things yeah, and what I'm talking to about you, man. <laughs> <Shout out> to <laughs> and the last one for you I guess your style might dictate it but I want to know intimate performance like let's say an expressions or big stage more people like blankets, blankets. Mm. The, like you had the answer first time expressions intimate I can even if I do the for the rest of my life <laughs> I rather do a hundred of those than one big show blankets I think the person you need to ask is didan <laughs> energy, energy, energy. Oh my gosh, like before I went on as like so nervous. I was so scared. She was like, "Isabel, are you going to sing?" I'm like, "Then go and tell them bring shots. She bring shots. Okay, bring water." Okay, calm down. Okay, now let's walk. She was like, "Okay." Like she was the one coming down. She's like, "Isabel, you've done this. You've done this before. You can do it again." Uh, but at the same time, it's probably maybe because I haven't done a lot of big stages because I got on stage and I was like, "Hello, Kampala." And guys were like, "That's the people was checking here." Like it was a new experience for me. I I came out differently. I came out a new and I I think that's nice to have once in a while, but 100 smaller shows for sure. But I still want to say which is because you've said that I want to bring it back to our, a bit of the seriousness. Just small small throw back to the seriousness. Um sometimes it's also about knowing what your like your style, your audience, your music, the feel. Sometimes the feel like Isabel's music is it's emotions and whatever which can happen on a big stage mm-hmm. because again we mentioned Kenneth Scott or that or whatever but like at the end of the day there's just something about being close to the artist when they're seeing that song and it's there, there's something about that so sometimes guys who are out there man don't yeah. be the there, authentic- I think being true to who you are yeah, self-aware true to who you are. the authenticity comes out. So even if you're on a big stage, we will know that it's a big stage and more people are getting um hooked to your music, which is a good thing. It can never be a bad thing. Mm. But at the same time, we'll not internalize it the way you as mm. an artist need it to be. Mm. Then there's rappers where you're just shouting along with me. It's kawa. Like let's be 8000 mm. in a stadium, you know? <laughs> yeah. Or uh, dance hall artist like yeah. surely all i need you to do is shake bums yes. it's never that like i don't want you you know like i don't want i don't i don't want to be in a in in, in like enclosed, enclosed space. space to do that yeah but better shout out shari maybe we should shake bums at expressions you know <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, nice but i don't know just to end of our our lack of seriousness i don't know you guys i gave you some consignment of some two truths and a lie I want mm. us to get to know each other and I want the people out there to play along to try and guess and see where the lie is <laughs> as the rest as all of us here tell some two <laughs> two truths and a lie in no particular order and the rest of us try to guess which is which about ourselves of course so don't tell me the moon is about what <laughs> <laughs> no so I've been to the moon I'll start with you uh, you started with me again yes okay. because All right. You all left right. me for Cohen. So <laughs> <laughs> everything is against you. Okay. Two truths. Okay, and a lie. Yeah. No particular order. I was the entertainment prefect in my high school. I was uh, the top scorer in law school. Yeah, 2017 at UCU. And I have a collaborative EP with my two brothers that is in the hip hop genre. Hey. The truth is you have a collaborative project with your brothers and you give yeah. geek vibes so <laughs> <laughs> and you hmm. are the top scorer 
It was like the valedictorian in like yeah, law yeah. school. You give, yeah. you give, you give, you give, you give geek vibes. You give, you give, yeah. you give geek. I don't know what you have used here. I, I was not a time perfect. I don't know. She's not giving. She's not time perfect. Yes. You're, you're giving geek. Yeah. <laughs> Some words you've used here. Valedictorian. Valedictorian. No, no. I was the interpreter. What? So it's a very funny story. And it's only people who know me from my high school that really struggle with the who I am now. <laughs> but I, uh, this is a really fun story. I, uh, for prefectorates, usually you stand and say, I want to be library prefect. I want to be the head girl. I want to be the deputy. I, uh, the, the administration decided, just decide. We will choose eh? where you shine. And in my school, the end brief also managed Chapel Choir, which is why I think they gave me that because I did the music and, oh. and whatnot. But at the same time, culturally, in my school, I was always the first four movies, I was always the first the <laughs> kids. Was, like, that was, that was me. Noise, loud. And in that whole prefecture of 26 people, I'm the only one who got what they wanted. <laughs> Someone went in to be Chapel Brief, they became the head girl. Like, it was so <laughs> random. Law school, I was like the twentieth in the year. I wasn't the best, mm. and then the other one still was. Geek. I am <laughs> still waiting to collaborate with my brothers. I think that would be such a great dream for me. There's no song where I've sung. I have a brother who is based in Nairobi. Actually, he's called Aine. Uh, you Wait, can you don't? Music. I've never sung with him anything recorded. Isaiah produced has produced was it everything. Was two truths, one lie? She has told two lies and two one lies and one truth. <laughs> Okay, I guess now we're just making three statements. And, and we choose the right out. one. Uh, uh, no, 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 please. The rest of us, let's not be like this lawyer who has found a loophole. <laughs> she has found a loophole. <laughs> no. Two truths. Um, one, I used to be a rapper and um, my name was G Weezy. G for Gideon and Weezy for Wetala, right? Uh, the other one uh, used to be the speaker of the Department of Performing Arts and Film at Macquarie University. And the other, I co-wrote the series JDC that is airing on uh, Pal Magic Prime. All of them are true. Man, okay, the, truth, all of them are true. <laughs> the truth is that you co-wrote the J JDC. JDC? The, yeah. Um, that's one truth. I think the first one. What was the first one? It sounded true. G Weezy, it's Genesis. giving rapper. <laughs> no, 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 but I can't believe that some of tell us. Used to be a rapper. And like the detail, the G Weezy, or he broke it down. So they're a very good liar. You know, or like you know, you know how people sometimes give you that extra Poker detail face, to whatever yeah. the lie. Like, because I do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd say the lie is number two. I know he has the potential to be probably worse, but uh, very unlikely. Wow. Like, you like you're, you're, you're all have failed. Uh -huh. All of them. Truth is. I was the speaker. Uh, um, and the rapper. And the no, liar. Oh. That was the lie. Oh, yeah. Me knew. being a rapper. I knew. Oh. I, oh. Like, like what you said, the detail. That's why I said the detail could be a mechanism because you put it <laughs> here to sell the lie. Yes, we do go for the right. But yes, I did um, G, yeah. write yeah. in GDC, JDC he even and uh, in speaker um, at the Department yeah. of Performing Arts and Film. Wow. Yeah. Over yeah, to you, girl. Yeah. Okay. Three truths, one lie. <laughs> <laughs> Two okay. truths, one lie. Okay, okay. I can't ride a bicycle. Um, I used to be a top seed badminton player under 15. Um, when 13, yeah, under 15. For like four years. And... Mm, <laughs> <laughs> I've been to 12 countries. <sighs> the lie is 12 countries. That's why lie is 12 countries, because I feel like when you travel to many... You've been you to be many counting? countries, but not like 12. Like, like 11 or 10 or 9. <laughs> ah. I know f about the badminton thing. And I think yeah. it makes sense because... Yeah. Because what? Yes. Yeah, I'm say things, but but you are a talent yeah. African. You were riding a bicycle. I was... You can ah, need a so bicycle that, uh -huh. to ride. Some has helped us. That's the that lie is the one of that countries. Ah, but pass wait. <laughs> pass wait. I don't know if you can ride a bike because that's something interesting to say. No. <laughs> the, those bikes are talent Africa. I was riding one. And, and you were there as well. You mean like a, the one with two wheels? What's a bicycle? Not bicycle. Uh, I feel that like one. I know one bicycle. <laughs> yes, Just to make sure it's not like a cool, like, you know, like. 
But I also feel she's very well traveled. She is. But I feel like if you will like are you count like maybe 12 wow. countries is more of a weird guy. number. <laughs> I'll go with the 12 one. Maybe I'll go with the basic one just to cover our grounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the bicycle. Okay, so I can't ride a bicycle. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> that guys. day you were riding the bicycle, and I was just like, "Oh, mama, well done." <laughs> so you see, people, it is all this wisdom from these many years of telling twelve life. countries. What are the twelve countries? Twelve. You so, go. Kenya, uh-huh. Rwanda, mm-hmm. Tanzania, um, UAE. Yeah, Dubai. Yeah, UAE. Uh, Malaysia. Five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Knowing them on that spot is hard. Yeah. The, the yeah, passport UK. is there. Yeah. They're 12. Wow. Interesting. Wow. I need to work harder. I, I I've only know, been to like I what? Seven? <laughs> like I would have to think. I'd be like, you've also traveled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even you've overtraveled. Yeah. You know, that was also adding like, you know, those, when you do like that. You pass yeah. the yeah. 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 It took the in the past. Yeah. 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 We're in Amsterdam. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Um, well, for me, <laughs> I had to write them. I, I had to be sure. Written, but my phone today. I had to be late. sure. I had to write all of them. Okay. Uh, I did biomed in French, and then I also did a duo course of math and computer science. That's one. That is one. <laughs> I have only been to one international act show at the Gogo. Okay. And um which of the two do I give I wrote for? <laughs> so, so and uh after a basketball game in Brussels a fight broke out and we were arrested. I think the second one is the truth. I think the second one is the lie. Mm-hmm. No, I know him. Uh, he doesn't usually go out for those like mm. big, 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 big concerts. I also think the second one is the is truth. truth yeah. Because the time when we had a bunch of international acts, he wasn't, he was not a, he wasn't even around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. maybe, it's the, venue. maybe it's the true. venue that's a trap. You said Lugogo particularly, yeah. right? And Lugogo, we've had Fireboy, we've had Adekunle Gold, we've okay, had so maybe, Keith okay, Daniel. I might be persuaded to go on your sides. So Brussels and a fight, you play basketball. Kind of truth. Kind sounds of true. sounds true. Yeah, man. It sounds very you, true. You speak French, you've been in those countries. Yeah. <laughs> so let's visit the first one, Biomed and yeah. Computer. That also sounds kawa. <laughs> yeah. Before Nkosi, right? Yeah. Ha. Huh. So those are the true truths. True. <laughs> uh, no, being arrested, yes. Biomed, bio yes. Biomed in French sounds. Yeah. So the lie sounds. for me. Wait, no. That's, I, I feel like you're being very <laughs> honest. <laughs> the okay. international. No, the international act is the truth. Yeah. The being arrested, truth. Okay. The biomed is, is a lie. lie. Okay, but it's not so wrong, but it's like less true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you enjoyed, are you agree with yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, the biomed is true. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah. the Brussels is the lie. science biomedical. So yes, I studied biomed in French, and then I came back and did math and computer science. Oh, but, wow. uh, so that is true. What's mitochondria the, in French? The, 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 the Lugogo is also. I told you earlier, the scientific things sound exactly the same. So mitochondria. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, so that's, well. so that's why. I, that's why I, I, I gravitated towards sciences because when I left you, I was like, ah, here. Yeah, I know my SST of our things of around. I know yeah. my, but now when they're telling me that that other stuff, too many words, I don't know them. But liquid, 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 solid, solid. Yeah. <laughs> All oh, right, yeah. let's go. Sciences, yes, and math, yes. So the fight and, and the, the, the fight, like Mark my hand, arrested also. No, it's because no, yeah, being, yeah, being, being black, being black, playing basketball. You added- yeah, it only makes sense. <laughs> You've be never been arrested. arrested. I've never been arrested in your entire life. My entire life. Bro. I didn't expect him to be. Thank arrested. God the other people who are on the pod are not yet say what they would have said. Oh my <laughs> God, those niggas would have said why. They know too much. They know too much. <laughs> they have said why. Oh, you're our gamba <laughs> right? right? No, that's not it. But I will not answer this. And in fact, before they expose me further, again I say, guys, if you want to support the podcast, you know what to do. You can send some money to six. 
6244404. That's 6244404. I want to thank my lovely, amazing guests for helping me hijack the podcast for the day. We have taken it away. Isabel, you, G, Sami, Wetala, and the Ninja C. The side of her you never see. <laughs> Guys, get to hear. Thank you for coming through. Say oh, yes. a goodbye to the people and I don't know. Yeah, guys, what's happening in Uganda is revolutionary. <laughs> and you will quote me, but please support Ugandan music because it's the mirror and expression of who we are and our journey to finding ourselves and our journey to blessing our children and those who come after us with where to begin navigating culture, thoughts, love, experiences, art. So support your Ugandan artists monetarily. Support them by showing up. Do the hard stuff that shows you actually believe it's easier said than done. But we are in this struggle together. together. Aluta, continue. Are. continue. What can I say, man? Um, stay true to your tribe. Um, stay cultured. You see what he did there. <laughs> <laughs> the right time. He told you rapper. The yeah, rapper. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gee Weezy. <laughs> Honestly, man, just stay humble. Stay hungry if you're an artist. Uh, stay blessed. Stay safe. Um, stay fan. And just stay um, in the cause of what we are here for. And that is just pushing the agenda. Uh, making sure the music reaches the people. And of course, um, may the music be with you and may it move you. Do, 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 do. Yeah. For me, it's always love and light. And shout outs to everyone who's doing their thing from photographers to videographers to podcasters mm. to um, rappers, do, 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 do. singers, Queen songwriters, event Queen creators. Dancers. Event curators, <laughs> radio personalities, TV personalities, DJs, the whole machine. Guys, what we're doing is good. Please, let's do more. And let's really emphasize on the monetization part. My biggest fear for this industry, and I'm going to put it to the record, is burnout, mm. which typically comes from you know frustrations of things not panning out the way you need them to. And the only way we can mitigate that is all coming together, making sure the machine is well oiled. And yeah, like support each other. These things of I'm too cool, too proud to, you know, support my birthday who's doing this. It doesn't matter which part of the creative sphere you are. Just that appreciation. The affirmation, it yeah. Adds, it adds energy. It gases mm. people to do more. Mm. Rather than, you know, don't diss them when you've never supported <laughs> don't diss them. Well, don't knock the see. hustle when you haven't tried it. Don't knock the hustle if you haven't supported it. You've heard, ladies and gentlemen, I am here with some wise people and I am going to go and continue the conversation elsewhere. And uh, to Ian, Felix, Damzi, the only way you come yeah. back is if you get me some spicy chicken wings. <laughs> Until next time, <laughs> goodbye. It's been episode five, season four of the Tribe G Podcast. Deuces.